There's always, always more to do. Alrighty. Hello, and um, if you're tuning in, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I am Kat, um, and this is the Bee and the Rose um, Fiber, whew, the Bee and the Rose Fiber Arts Podcast, um, where I'm going to be talking about all of my fibery projects. Um, I, yes, lots of editing. Okay, I hope I can stand the sound of my own voice for that. Um, I am a very avid fiber artist. I, um, let's see, I learned, initially I learned how to crochet um, and kind of a little bit knit. Um, when I was seven in elementary school, they, um, I went to a very artsy elementary school, so they, um, tried to teach us how to knit. Um, I didn't, I wasn't great at the knitting bit. I, I couldn't get a square down. Um, it was one of those things where if you could do the square, you could do an animal. And I never got that far, unfortunately. There was one kid in my class who he knit every, he knit the entire zoo. Like, they would give him a pattern uh, for a stuffed animal, and he would, like, finish it and get on to the next one. Like, he knit every pattern they had. It was amazing. But I was able to cr crochet a recorder case. Like, if, I don't know, um, if you're not, American or maybe even if you are in a more recent like if you're just yeah no if you're not American um because I don't know what the school system's like outside of America um in America most elementary schools um have you learned recorder which is a woodwind instrument um it's a very big whistle with with holes um so i knit a case for that um not knit i'm sorry i crocheted a case for that i'm as bad as the muggles um and then and so every couple of years growing up i would um convince my mom to buy me a ball of yarn and a a set of knitting needles and I would always end up with a nest of yarn and one knitting needle. I don't know where the other one ever went, but nine-year-olds, you know, young people. And um, I know there are a lot of young kids who are, like, amazing fiber artists. But I'm, yeah. Um, so then I started crocheting again. What? My sister's kitten is playing with the stash next to me and has just stopped, knocked over one of my double-pointed needles. Oh well, um, I've saved it. And then I started crocheting again um, in 2015 because, let's see, I was, I was 21 and um, I was chasing my dog around the yard and I fell and I broke my foot. And, um, I, I was bedridden for three months and my computer had broken a couple of months before that. So I was like, well, I need to do something with my hands or I'm going to go mad. Um, so my grandmother came over and she suggested a few YouTubers, um, like the crochet crowd and that, and she taught me, well, she didn't really teach me, I, like, she gave me the resources to learn, um, because by the time she could get over, I'd already picked it up, um, and I kind of went from there, um, and then in January of 2016, I bought a drop spindle, um, from Denise at Yarnshine. Um, she's amazing. She's 
amazing. I got my drop spindle kit for like $22. It comes with a drop spindle and a caddy, and it comes with a bat of fiber. Really nice blended fiber. And that's, it was $22. Like, the fiber alone is worth $27. It was amazing. And so then after that, um, I managed to find myself a teacher to learn drops, how to use the drop spindle. Um, that took a little while, it took like three months or so before I was able to find somebody in person. Like, I had done a lot of research on how to do drop spindling. I um, watched a lot of YouTube videos. I um, read some books on it. Um, but I just, I wasn't very sure that I was doing it correctly. So um, I was at a Thinking Day festival with the Girl Scouts. Um, and there was this girl sitting and going and spinning on her Turkish, Turkish spindle. And I'm like, yes, this is exactly what I need. So I got hooked up with her and, um, I've been going to, um, their fiber arts group, um, every first Sunday of the month since. Well, the ones that I can get to work can be a little hard with that, but, um, now I have a pretty set schedule um, so that I have Sunday mornings off, um, which is nice. Um, and then through all of this time, since about January, I had begun to try knitting again. Um, but I kept, like, I, I was, I know how to knit and I know how to do a knit stitch. I knew how to do a purl stitch. But every time I made a, finished a row, it would be longer than the last one. It would have more stitches. Um, so I would get frustrated and put it down, walk away, and then come back a couple of months later. Well, August of 16, I finally got it. I don't know what I was doing wrong before but it was no longer happening. So in August of 2016, I started knitting again. Um, and I haven't really put down the needle since. Um, uh, like, now that I'm knitting, I crochet, but only on occasion, usually when I want to make a quick stuffed animal. Like, um, in December, I made a snowman. I, I crocheted a snowman. And I gave him earmuffs, and then I knit him a cable sweater. Uh, not sweater, but a, a scarf. And I gifted that to one of the leaders um, with the Girl Scouts. And then in January, I made a skeleton, and I think that was the last thing I crocheted. It's been almost, it's been like 10 months um, since I've, I've, sat down and actually crocheted something. Um, I love crocheting. I like, um, there are a lot of differences between knitting and crochet. I like being able to do them both, and I'm very well, well versed in crochet. But knitting is so fast. Knitting is so fast. You just, like, this week I knit a pair of socks. I'm knitting a baby sweater. I've I've knit a full shawl. Actually, the full shawl took me a year. But knitting is so fast. Um, I also, this summer, um, no, I think last summer I picked up needle felting. Um, and I dabble in that a bit. Um, I'm going to show you something I've got from that. And then this summer I picked up embroidery, which I kind of haven't really touched much, but I would like to get more into if my muse could just let me put down the knitting needles for five seconds. That would be nice. Um, but yeah, so I've pretty much dived right into this rabbit hole. Um, and I'm, I, I love it. I just love it. Um, I've been kind of wanting to do a podcast for... A very long time, but every time I turn on the camera, my voice gets stuck. Um, 
pretty much the only reason that hasn't happened today is because I'm I'm kind of directing this at a specific person I've who I'm comfortable with talking with. And that's how I've gotten around that um that awkwardness. Not awkwardness, but fear. Yeah, fear. Um I think that is it for introductions. Um, I spin on an Ashford Kiwi Gen 1. Um, oh, which I bought in March. I forgot to mention that. I bought a spinning wheel in March uh, with my tax refund. And I've been spinning... Well, I haven't spun anything since Tour de Fleece. But boy, during Tour de Fleece, I get through like 10 ounces of fiber, um, which is a lot for me. Um, pretty much I would wake up in the morning and start spinning and then I'd go to work and I would come home at like 1 or 2 a.m. and start spinning again. Um, so I don't really need that much sleep. I get like four hours and I'm, I'm good to go. Um, not that it doesn't hurt, but that's what my body allows. Um, let's see. I think next I've got my finished objects, which I need to grab. I keep them so close, right? Um, can I pause this? Okay. Wow, I didn't realize I'd started already. Alrighty. So finished objects. So first, um, we have these, these cute, tiny little socks. Oh my god. Um, these are knit out of um, Shiner by Stranded Dye Works um, on the Paradise Base. Um, it's a fingering weight merino cashmere nylon blend. Um, it's so soft and so pretty. It's a purpley gray. It's very, very nice. I also met knit, spoiler alert, knit a pair of mittens out of these. These are going to be a present for a friend of mine who is, um, I think, expecting a baby this month. Like, he, he should be here any day now. Um, I'm very excited. This is the first pair of socks I've ever knit. Um, and these are the second pair of socks I've ever met. They're kind of covered in cat fur already because I wore them yesterday. Um, these are shorty vanilla sock. Oh, get in the camera. I don't own sock blockers yet because I haven't had a need for them. But the yarn curls tomorrow, so I think they're going to go on my shopping list. Um, this is knit out of, um... <sighs> Lion brand um, Woolies sock yarn. I can't remember the name of the colorway, but it reminded me of um, the Ravenclaw book house colors. So I went ahead and grabbed that. Um, it does have some silver and green in there as well, um, which is makes me a little sad that I didn't get my wish of being a slither claw like my sister. Um, but that's okay. They're <laughs> really nice. Um, they're uh, they're. The first adult size sock I ever knit, um, I did, I cast on, oh yeah, the, they're knit with um, size 2.75 millimeter needles, which is a US size 2. Um, I cast on 72 stitches, and um, I did it top down, and I used a kish, bleh, kiss lit. Fish, lips, kiss, heel. Fish, lips, kiss, heel. Um, and then I, for the, do, the toe, I did an alternate rounded toe. My sister's kitten is playing with my fiber. I hope it's safe now. One can never know with cats. Um, <laughs> and let's see, I really, it's just a vanilla pattern. Like I was kind of just, I gave it a three by one ribbing and I was just like, let's see what fits my foot. And um, it did pretty well. Uh, it's a little loose around the actual foot, but 72 inches is definitely what I need for the heel. Um, 
if I want a longer sock, I'm going to have to cast on more stitches and then um, do a decrease going into the actual ankle because um, it was not long enough to go over my calf, just my ankle. Um, and then I'll need, after the next time I do this heel, once I'm done with the heel, I'll have to decrease for the foot. Um, probably go down to 68 stitches. And then in... No, I think, yeah, that'll be fun for the toe, too. Um, so that's, I think... Let me see, I might have one more finished object. Let me go get it real quick. So this is my Sala Starm shawl with a Stellar Wave edge. Um, I, the... You can find the pattern on Ravelry by Audrey Nicklin. Um, I bought this pattern last year in August, and I cast off this project this past August. Um, when I first started knitting this, um, I'd never read a chart before. I'd never done beading before. Um, I'd never knit in the round flat before. Um, so it was a lot of new learning experiences. I knit it on a 3.5 millimeter needle. Um, my Knitter's Pride interchangeable needles on a, I think it was probably a 200, um, 200 inch cable because I ended up, um, no, I think I had 200 centimeters cable. I'm not sure. I ended up um, putting together 260 inches and then a 16 inch, something like that. I'm not really sure. I get the I get it kind of confused when it on the label when it says centimeters or inches. So I'm not really sure. Um, but I need like I I prefer doing things on long cables. Um, so. I had to frog this project a lot, a lot, like three, I would get to chart D, I would drop a stitch, it would go all the way down, I'd have to go all the way back, I couldn't just pull it up, it would like cause all kinds of havoc on my life, or I would like check my stitch count and it would be wrong and I would just have to go back and, and redo the whole thing. Um, so I ended up setting it aside until February um, when I was building up to Nano Chromo, which is a March, the month of March Knit Along. Um, it stands for National Knitting and Crochet Month. Uh, it's run by Heidi over at Crochet Soul, no, Cozy Soul Crochet. Um, Heidi is amazing. She's really nice. Um, she makes great stitch markers. They're really cute. Um, and her blog on Tumblr is just incredibly informative. Um, she's just really great. Um, sorry, that's Coralie again saying hello to the cats. Um, and yeah, so I started, I did, I recast it on, on February 15th. I cast, I knit charts A through E all the way in 15 days, and on March 1st, I started chart F, and um, I made it till round 132 um, out of 158, so I got really close to my goal, but I didn't quite make it, um, and then um, I ended up setting it aside. I was trying really hard to get it done for my sister's birthday. Uh, her birthday is March 30th, and it just didn't end up happening. And then I tried to get it done for midsummer, and that didn't happen. It's just, it took a lot of work. And then I finally did finish it this August. I would sat, sat everything else aside, and I just went. And I um, did the Stellar Waves edge for it. Um, it's a looks good enough, but like um, I had problems with round nine. Like I'd never had enough stitches after round seven to finish round nine appropriately. And then if I had um, round eleven, would have been wrong. It would have too many stitches. Um, so it just never really worked out. 
um, which is unfortunate. Uh, and then on top of that, like when I went to block it, um, I managed to block out the waves that were in the body, but I couldn't get the edge that was in the lace. Um, I don't, it just didn't work because this is knit out of loops and threads, um, wool-like acrylic and it's in the denim blue color. It's really nice. It is the softest acrylic I've ever felt. It's not scratchy at all. It's amazing. Even when it's wet, it feels fantastic. But I, I just can't get it to block. I'm so done with acrylic. I never want to touch acrylic again. Um, but I'm poor, so I don't think that's going to happen. Like most, like I can get probably cheap wool from, um, from my local yarn shops, but I probably can't get fancy looking cheap wool. You have to go, kind of have to go for acrylic with that. Um, and I save up for expensive stuff like um, I kind of splurged on the stranded dye works that I bought. Um, but it's really well worth it. I'm so excited to be working with it and I never want to work with acrylic again, have I mentioned? Um, but yeah, so that's it for my work in progress. And um, I'm going to start with some needle felting for my whips. So this is... A dryer ball it is a seasonal piece soon it will be a pumpkin um, it's coming out really well I think um, if I were to do this again I would probably start with a bigger ball because um, I started with a fairly good size but as you needle felt it gets smaller and smaller and then once you throw it through the dryer it'll, it'll really shrink up on you um, but I'm really happy and excited, and as soon as I finish the sweater, I will return to this one and finish it off, um, finish the rest of the pumpkin, and then add, try and add um, a stem and a leaf, and it'll be super cute. Or maybe just a leaf, because I'm not exactly, like, on my, I did a small proto of it, and I was able to get the stem in, but, you know. I'd like to be able to repeat that, but we'll see. We'll see. The next thing I'm working on um, is this flax light sweater by Tin Can Knits. On the pattern is free on Ravelry because Tin Can Knits wants to make sure that everyone knows, learns how to knit, and has a good experience with it. Um, this is a really awesome pat pattern, and I'm psyched that it's free. I'm so happy. Um, I've never knit a sweater before and um, this is just a really simple start. It's top down. I'm doing it in the zero to six month size because it's going to be for a baby. Um, it's going to go with the mittens and the socks um, to my friend in Texas and if for whatever reason the garments I'm knitting don't fit baby then I will have her send them back and I will knit a teddy bear and I will put them on that and send it back. And so it'll get to them one way or the other. I'm hoping it'll be a garment that they can wear for a while, but if it's just something that, that he looks at and then plays with, that's fine too. Um, I would like to also knit a hat out of this, but I'm just not sure and I can't really find a decent hat pattern, which is really weird. Like, a free, decent baby hat pattern. Um, and I just don't know enough about sizing to um, make one myself, um, which is unfortunate. I'm going to need to play with that a bit, but I don't really have any babies to practice on. We'll see. So that is my work in progress. Um, let's see. This is future knitting. Future knitting, I have this. This is, it's yak. I love it. Well, it has yak content. Um, this is my hand spun. I spun this up during Tour de Fleece. Um, it contains yak 
and a few other delicious things. It's silk, merino, bamboo, I believe. Um, I got this from Yunshine. Um, the, it's made out of two different dots. One of them is Plum Pumpkin, which has beautiful browns and oranges and purples, and it's just absolutely lovely. My favorite color is this one, which you can't see. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, I'm on my iPhone in YouTube Capture, so this isn't the best quality I could ever hope for. And it also has purples. And then the thing I plied it against um, was um, Sock Yarn Blend Braid Number 6. I believe she turned that into her Cornucopia Sock Blend Braid, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, Denise is really accommodating. So if you see something um, that I've made and you want some, go over to Yarn Shine on Etsy and ask her because she will totally, probably, most likely do it for you. If you've got the money, she's got the she's got the fiber. Okay, so YouTube Capture has to keeps telling me that my phone doesn't have enough storage, which is kind of annoying because I get interrupted mid sentence. But here we go. Alrighty, so that. That one I'm going to be turning into the pumpkin coach um, shawl that is by, um, let me see, it's by, checking my Ravelry, which my, oh, Kitman Figaro, F Figure, Figaro, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Okay, so, and it's, I'm hoping to have it done by October 21st. Um, because that's when my aunt is getting married. Um, and I've got a lovely blue dress that I think I'm going to put it over if it matches. If it doesn't match, then hey, the dress is cute. Um, and I like the shawl. So, yeah. And so that's going to be that project. And then um, uh, Friday, um, So Perfect Pearls has a um, spackle that they're starting. That she, she's starting, Jadis. Um, doing a co collaboration spackle where you um, spin to knit a sock. And my little si I told all of my sisters that I was going to be, I wanted to knit them all socks for um, Yule this year. And my two little sisters told me about what they want, and my two other sisters have yet to decide on a yarn. Um, my littlest sister says she's 12 and she says she wants unicorn socks. She did not like any of the unicorn yarns on Etsy. So um, last month I had purchased this, which is a unicorn cloud, again by Yarn Shine, um, at her bequest because she, she wanted to play with one of the batlings. Um, and I wasn't sure about spinning it into a sock because it has no nylon content. Um, but I think it will be okay and it's what Maya wants. So even if it wears out really quickly, it'll be alright. It'll be okay. It's still a good gift. Um, so I'm going to be participating in that sock, um, spin to sock. Um, it starts on Friday and ends on November 15th. And then I'm hoping that um, if I can get it done by November 1st, I might be able to enter it into um, Amy's festive sock along. Amy from Stranded Dye Works, of Stranded Dye Works, is, going, is also doing a sock along that started September 1st and goes until November 1st. Um, so they've already started, but I've, I still have a month and a half to do, um, and it only takes me about four days, um, it, it'll probably only take me about 12 days, because it takes me four days to, um, spin three ounces of, of yarn, and then it takes me eight days to make a pair of socks, and I'm going to be using Candy Cane Socks by um, Nitty Melissa on, off of Ravelry. It's a free pattern. It has lace candy canes throughout the leg. 
Um, I know candy canes are usually red and white, but we do have rainbow varieties now. So I'm just gonna, um, I'm really excited about that. Um, I've never done a knit along or a crochet along or a spackle. I haven't, I've never done these things before and I'm really excited to, um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So, um, that's all the planned projects and the whips I currently have. Now it's time for, um, unfinished but never forgotten, um, my UFOs. So, firstly, I have, um, my Sophie's Universe, which is a lovely, lovely pattern by Deidre Ulis. Um, she can find on Ravelry and, um, I think also on WordPress. Um, it was a spackle done in 2015. Not a spackle. It was a cow. It was a crochet along. It is, this is beautiful. This is absolutely lovely. And I don't know how much you're able to see, but it's gorgeous. Um, I knit it, I made the mistake of knitting it out of Red Heart's Unforgettable yarn. Um so named because you'll never forget not to use it um it's really gross yarn like it's it's pretty and um in comparison to other red heart yarns it's not as scratchy but it's still scratchy and it pills and it uh holds on to itself a lot like i think it would be good for like a vegan who wanted to learn how to felt you could probably use this fiber for that. Um, like, you can't frog. If you frog, it'll just get caught on itself, and you're stuck. I had to, the first time I tried Sophie's Universe, I ended up cutting it away from the ball I happened to be using at that time because I could not frog it, and then I abandoned that color away altogether. Um, so I'm pretty close to finished. I think I have like one more section to go, but I think instead I'm just going to find a good stopping place and, um, and bind off. <laughs> um, so that will be it for that one. And then I have like a million ends to, to <sighs> weave in, which I hate doing, but I will do it. Um, Actually, today I saw um, Yarn Experiments is putting out a Dia de los Muertos colorway. It's not for Halloween. It's for Dia de los Muertos. Thank you. Um, I think I might try and do that, a Sophie's Universe in that. That's pretty. I, I wasn't sure. Like I'm, I'm probably going to buy it, but I don't know what I'm going to make out of it. I don't like doing that. I like having plans for my yarns. Sometimes you don't have plans, though. Okay, next. Um, okay, so this is my dragon's pelt. It is a baby blanket that I'm making for a friend of mine. Um, she, her baby is three years old now, or about to be. Um, it is 36, 36 inches wide, and I want it to be at least that tall. So it'll be at least a square. Um, it takes me about half an hour to do each. No, it takes me about an hour to do each row because you have to do a, um, a foundation row and then the scales. Um, it's basic crochet, crocodile stitch pattern. Um, you make a post and then you put, you make two posts and you put five crochets, crochet, crochet, cro excuse me, I can't speak, crochet stitches into each post, um, a slip stitch, and then the other five, and then that creates the, um, crocodile scale, and it's lovely, and it's great, and you don't want to have it touching you during the summer, because it's really thick, it's a great winter blanket, and hopefully I'll finish it this winter or fall, and I'll be able to send that out to her, um, I made it out of Lion Brand's um, Heartland out of Kings Canyon. It's this lovely green with um, some speckles of silver and white. It's gorgeous and it feels nice. It does not feel terrible. Um, 
other acrylic blankets that are just too hot to knit on right now and I've been working on forever is my non-binary um, pride queen sized blanket. This is the first project I ever cast on. So hopefully I'll be able to get this done this winter because it's been two years and I'm my mom's ready for it to be done. Uh, she keeps telling me to finish it and I'm just like, but it's so... Because, like, the problem is, is, like, deep in this... I started with the purple and it's it's pretty bad to look at. It's not straight. Um, I don't actually know how I was creating the stitch. Um, I believe it was a half hitch stitch instead of a normal double crochet. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to match that now that I'm beautiful and even and nice tension. Um, but I think I'm just going to do it a half double crochet all the way across from here on out. Um, get it to the correct length with the other colors and then bind off and be done. And um, hopefully that will be done this, this winter. Um, and I believe that is all I have for that one. Alrighty, so as I said, the San Diego Yarn Crawl is this weekend. So I didn't have any acquisitions today, but I will definitely have acquisitions next week and probably um, footage from the different um, shops and farms. And I'm so, so sorry that somebody's doing yard work outside. Um, that's probably bound to happen in my videos. Um, I live upstairs in a neighborhood that is very acoustic and I work nights and I'm a, at home during the day when everyone is doing their yard work. So it's always going to be something. <laughs> I, I really appreciate it if you've made it this far. I really hope that you decide to come in, tune in next time. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you.